Okay, so last lesson we've been we've been we were looking at um, angles and parallel lines. Now, um, basically, what angles and parallel lines are uh, involving are these uh, three rules. So we have, and they've got names, and you, um, it's good to be aware of these names. So the two lines that I've highlighted in reddish, pink, or whatever. Uh, they are parallel to each other. And then we have another line that's just um, going through those two parallel lines. Um, when we do that, if we have an angle, two ang if we take two angles that are both on the same side of the blue line, uh, one's on the inside there and the other one's on the, on the outside of the two parallel lines, then we'll find them that they are the same. So this is these are called corresponding angles. Alternate angles are angles that are both on the inside between the two parallel lines, but either side of the blue line. And they are called alternate angles, and they are the same angle. They are the same angle as well. And then you have interior angles, and these are two angles that are both on the inside between the two parallel lines and um, on the same side of the blue line. They're not equal, but they add up to 180 degrees. Now, um, what's quite useful to do is to realize that um, there's basically, of, with all these angles that we can imagine here, there are only two different angles altogether. So. I'll explain what I mean. I'll set this up and I'm going to highlight it so you can see what's what. Okay, so we've got, I've made two parallel lines here and I've put the blue line to go through the two parallel lines. Now, I can identify a number of different angles here. So I could say that angle, we can call that angle A. And this angle, which we'll call angle B. A, a and B, have a think, what are they? Are they any of these three? They are. They are corresponding angles. One's on. The, they're both on the same side of the blue line, and they ones on ones between the two red lines, the two parallel lines, are ones on the outside. Um, so let's name let's name a couple of others. If we take this one here, this is B. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, hang on a second. This is C. Let's label this one as D. Uh, we'll label this one as E, F, G, and H. Now, what we want is let's let's uh, see if we can work these out, some of these angles out, rather than just the um, what's the word, relying on our memory of the different rules and so on. It's quite good to kind of understand it then we can memorize it as well but understanding it is going to be more powerful because if you do forget you can always work it out and also it helps you to get those higher marks so let's say we've got two intersecting lines like this now th these are two intersecting lines right here and here are another two intersecting lines so let's imagine that this angle here is 25 degrees well this angle can be worked out because it's on a straight it's on a, those two angles together are on a straight line so therefore they must add up to 180 so this angle here has to be well let's think about it maybe you can have a think about what it's going to be before i say the answer so it's going to be 155 degrees okay now if we consider the other um, straight line, these two angles, 25 degrees, and this new one I've just drawn, they're on this straight line, right? And so they have to add up to 180. 25 degrees is over there, so 180 take away 25. Well, that is 155 degrees. And then what about this one? Well, these two down here are also on that straight line. So they have to add up to 180. 
and so this has to be 25 degrees. So you can see here that um, 155, well, basically opposite angles and intersecting lines are always going to be the same. You can imagine playing around with this or giving other numbers, you would see that using the same sort of working out as I, that I just did, they'd be the same. So in other words, we can say, looking at this diagram, that A is equal to C because they're an opposite like opposite they're called you call them vertically opposite angles so this is the terminology and it's nothing to do with parallel lines although it does come up in parallel lines as you can see um but it just needs just any two intersecting lines so and whenever we are looking at angles in, in, in this topic here we're always comparing two angles we can't say for example b is vertically opposite we have to say what it's vertically opposite to. So B is vertically opposite to D. So B and D would be the same as well. So so, so they are vertically, vertically opposite angles is what we're looking at here. Um, so I can just, let's just highlight these in green. And we can say, we can do that. Okay. Um, and we can also see that G is equal to H. So they are the same angle too. And we can see that um, we can see that D is equal to B. What I might do actually is just lock that because I've got a little idea later on. Basically, I can rub out the highlighting without rubbing out the letter. So um, so we can see that B is equal to D, I said earlier on. And we can see that E is going to be equal to F. Well, can we go can we go one stage further? Well, basically, now we can just use now we can just use one of our rules, which is that um, let's just use the corresponding angles rule. G and E are corresponding, which means that uh, G and E are equal to each other. G is equal to E. So we can now, I can now rub out that highlighting there. And I can color it in blue. And I can rub out that highlighting and color that in blue because E is equal to F. Now also, I can use a number of different ways to show that D and B, well, first of all, we know they're equal to each other, but they're also the same as A and C for, for a number of reasons. One, A is alternate with D, B is vertically opposite D, and we can also see B and F must add up to 180, so we can use a similar rule as before. Um, or we can say that B is um, alt is um, corresponding to, to A. There's a number of different th reasons why we can say that B and D are the same as A and C. So now we colour in those ones. And as you can see, in all the different angles you can have in a pa in parallel line setup, there are only going to actually be two different angles. So we can just call it a small angle and a big angle. So if we know so a shortcut here then is to identify the value of either the big or the small angle and then you can do every single other angle on there without even work you know showing you're working out or anything um so if i knew that for example a is equal to 10 degrees all the other green ones are all 10 degrees and all the blue ones are 170 degrees so that kind of gives me a shortcut i can even i don't even have to remember the reasons why if I'm able to see which one's a small one, which one's a big one, then I, I can just say that, well, all the small ones are going to be the same as that small one, and all the big ones are going to be 180 degrees minus the um, small one. So uh, that's a little shortcut. However, it's only going to help you to some degree. Um, so um, I'll, 
Well, basically, what they will want you to do is to explain your answer for some of them. And that's when they want you to use this knowledge of corresponding angles, alternate angles, and interior angles. But that's my first video. What we'll do, what we'll do in the second video is look at how we can use that understanding to answer some of these questions. Okay.